Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having a fantastic weekend. As you can see, it's nice and sunny here. There is tons that I'm talking about in the chicken and garden updates. If you haven't already watched that, uh, go watch it when you're done here. If, if you like chickens and gardens, I know it's not everyone's thing. So let's talk about today's topic. As I hope you have all noted, Kate Wadden Elliott's Kia Soul EV, the one that her wife generally drives as a daily driver, has been a bit unwell of late. And we hadn't given you an update on it because we were waiting for the battery pack to be replaced on it. And then Kia turned around and said, actually, we're not going to replace the back. And that is frustrating for Kate and, and her partner, but it's also frustrating for many Kia EV, uh, Soul EV owners around the country. I know that other people have reached out and said, hey, the same thing has happened to me. You're not alone. And we're going to do a follow up video on that. But this being take two, where we talk about things that are a little bit more a kind of thought based rather than factual based, I want to talk to you today about what the future of, of EV ownership looks like and wouldn't it be better if we all had a uniform agreed upon battery pack design in the industry. Now I know that in the last couple of years we've seen automakers move away from discrete battery packs that you can very easily insert and take out of the car to structural battery packs where Everything is, is uh, still removable, but everything is kind of designed to be a structural component within the battery. And lots of right to repair advocates have, have voiced concerns about does that make electric car battery packs less repairable? If you can't as easily open them up and whip out a module and put a new module in, does that make it more complicated further down the line? And I'm going to take it one step further and say, isn't it time that as an industry, the auto industry goes, OK, we've got all of these different makes and models of EVs coming along. Can't we do something to make a, a fairly standardized size for the battery pack so that if in the future something goes wrong with your 10 or 15 year old EV, and let's not forget EVs have no reason not to carry on working the same length of time as an internal combustion engine car. In fact, more because there are fewer moving parts, they require less maintenance. The batteries are kind of the Achilles heel. If we had a universal battery pack design or a universal sizing scheme that allowed you to go and buy a battery that fit your car and put it in, wouldn't that be a better solution? Wouldn't that do away with the, the whole debacle that Kate and, and her wife had, which was they had to wait for a battery to be remanufactured in Korea and then shipped all the way to the US and then tested again in the US and then Kia decided not to put it in their car. If we used the same battery sizing setup as 12 volt starter batteries do for cars wouldn't that be better so i'm not saying that you know well we have a group 31 battery because they're tiny but if you uh, look through an automotive catalog you'll see that 12 volt starter batteries for cars and trucks and, and other vehicles follow a a specific set pattern and every car has a slightly different battery compartment but they all conform pretty much unless you have a really bizarre, unusual, like K-Class car, they all have a, a pretty similar sizing methodology. It can vary from market to market, but if you have a group such and such battery, you know you can go into any parts store and go, I need a group such and such battery, and they'll be able to find you one or give you one that will fit your vehicle. Hopefully not, uh, hopefully not charge you a lot of money for it. I don't think giving is, is actually in their remit, but but certainly sell you one from a decent price. If we had that same thing happen in the EV world, I could see a future where vehicles like our Chevrolet Bolt sitting right here next to the camera or the truck that the camera is currently resting on, carry on working long into the future, long after the automaker has stopped making the vehicle, because I can rock up at an auto parts store and go, I need this module configuration battery pack, the are stand, there are standard mounting holes for the battery pack. It's got an adaptive BMS that can talk to any number of different manufacturers' vehicles. And you literally 
either go to a specialist and get it dropped out or maybe if you if they're particularly handy you can unplug some connectors and plug some new ones in and put the battery in i think there's so much in the way of um ooh, scary scary electric cars going on that people don't actually actively think what would i need to do to work on my car myself okay well i might need to flush the battery pack but okay tools have existed for years that have allowed us to flush other systems i once had a, a morris minor with a with a, a radiator that was very very difficult to flush it wasn't a standard morris minor i hasten had it was my hot rod and it had uh, a propensity to develop air bubbles in its top radiator rail and it took me like a day to bleed the system but i got it done with very few tools if i can do that then surely we can learn to bleed battery pack cooling systems there has to be a better way than what we currently have, which is if your car is out of production after a certain number of years, the car company kind of wipes the hands of you and there's no there's no standard that you can go to a part supply store and go, OK, I need something that fits this car. Here is the standard because every pack is different. Every vehicle is different. And we know that that's not how battery cells are made. Right. If we talk about Tesla, we talk about the the 18650 or 18, 18650 or the 2100 cells we know or, or the 4680 cells we know the physical size of the cells that's the start right standardized battery cells we can make the battery cells standardized why can't we make the module standardized if we can make the module standardized why can't we make the battery management system standardized and we have computer technology today that can do incredible things you would think that it would be ultimately fairly simple at the end of the day to develop a battery management system that could be configured to mimic an oem battery management system in a vehicle if those standards are available if automakers got behind it and i think there's this protectionism that's stopping this standardized battery pack design but I want to know, would you put a standardized battery pack in a vehicle? Would you buy a vehicle with a standardized battery pack that you knew years down the line you could carry on using, even if the manufacturer that made your vehicle is no longer interested in supporting them? I would love to know your thoughts. Let me know them below. And I will be back next week, as usual, for another Sunday Musing. And like I said earlier, go check out the chicken and garden. You, you never know, you might like it. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube. They help cover our bills, pay our team, and make sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Mac McIntosh, Kyle Randall, Bryant E. Day, Shedrick Mask, and Robin Mayorga. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address linked below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. This month, we're getting ready to celebrate Pride with an amazing t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator Erin. Get yours today when it drops in early June by heading to our Red Bubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video but we think that this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving.